I would like to welcome you to the upper echelon. I want you to be honest and don't you lie. Don't you think of lying. Be for real. You're not a Bud Crawford fan. You just hate Spence, right? I want the truth. You can't handle the truth. Hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. More, because I have seen Spence have to fight a guy his size. Mm -hmm. That's gonna really make him fight yet. He been taking out, he been outboxing everybody he fought so far. Uh, Mikey wasn't his size, so we expected that. Um, the guy who sees Kel Brook, uh, he had some of Brooklyn Orbital from uh, Triple G, so I don't think he really was the same either. Um, so we haven't seen that. Now he's both. He just ain't fought that person yet. But now he's about to fight that person that gives us a measure stick as to where he really is. But after I see what he does with Sean, then I probably give you a little bit better of a breakdown on how I see fight. All right, come on now, Roy. You say Spence need to fight somebody his size? He's a fucking welterweight. Everybody that he fights is his size of welterweight. Unlike Crawford moving through the divisions and fighting smaller people like Gamboa, who is a 122-pounder coming up to fight a 130-pounder, and using Sean Porter as a measuring stick. Didn't Kell Brook beat Sean Porter? Why you couldn't use Lamont Peterson or Campo or Mikey Garcia, who y'all said was pound for pound great? See, I hate when people say something and then try to backtrack because you was on the Mikey Garcia train as well, Roy, with Sugar Ray Leonard. But now you talking about he need to fight somebody, but you're not saying nothing about Bud who's moving through fighting people like Gambo who dared to be great jumping up two weight divisions or John Molina Jr. or Hank Lundy. Come on now, you talking about you need to see somebody fight somebody's size, then bring that to Crawford as well. You got to have the same energy when you come into both fighters, Roy. That's being unbiased. I ain't saying nothing about how big it is until it's signed. Because I've been looking for it for so damn long that I'm tired of even thinking about it. You know, it's like, it's been the biggest fight that, have, that needs to be made for the sport of boxing for the last three years. Why so long then? I don't know. I mean, I, I do know, but I mean, <laughs> I'm going to let Tony answer that. He understands. <laughs> he like to talk about that topic a little bit more than I do, so I'm going to yeah, talk yeah. about it. But it's like, when you play that political game. Let's talk about it, Roy. You got Terrence Crawford here saying there's a lot of puppets, and he's going to be the puppet master right now. Earl Spence has been signed his part of the contract months ago. We still haven't got Terrence Crawford to sign his. He's also trying to price himself out because, see, he knows Earl Spence will do whatever it takes to become undisputed. And he knows that his time is almost short, so he's trying to get a farewell fight, a retirement check. Usually, Bud is with all the smoke, but right now, we see no smoke. Crawford has had two times to make this fight. On his way to welterweight, Spence offered him the fight, but he took the Jeff Horn fight. After the Porter fight, Spence offered him 60-40. He didn't want that fight. So, well, who's the one at fault? Come on now, let's be biased or unbiased. Which one you gonna be, Roy? Let's keep it all the way real, Roy. Because when Earl was handling his side of the business, like he said, he said, I'm gonna clean up this side of the street. Crawford was coming at him. As soon as Earl cleaned the street up, he hollered at Crawford. Now Crawford, he's silent. He trying to make smoke and mirrors, hollering at the Charlos and everything. Don't worry about the Charlos. Worry about this smoke in front of you. Worry about already this the biggest payday of your career, but you sitting here stalling out the damn fight. If you knew that you could beat this man, then why don't you go ahead and take the money and take the belts then? Because you know you can't go against that bone crushing, body snatching, soul touching power of Earl the True Spence. That's what it is. And Roy, you need to start calling him for what it is and stop being on the side a hater. over Earl right now. I said, they said, well, why you say that? So, because Earl really hadn't caught anybody that we could really mention to him. Of course, Crawford and Crawford and Pope people. I wouldn't say that it's a guarantee that Crawford beat Earl. No. But I was saying, basically, still, which I said the other day, we haven't seen Earl against the competition we saw Crawford against. Yes. Yeah. So, it's hard to judge and say Earl got the advantage. We ain't really seen it. I mean, in the gym, they seem good, but we have to. Because, I've seen the real. Uh, I'm saying, yeah. you see, but I have. Right. So as an observer, I can't say, oh, what y'all saw this, but I'm telling you. Plus, we all know that when the lights come on, stuff happens.
So you said you judging them off of they, they, they fighting, who they seen, right? Well, let's look at these last eight opponents then, all right? You got Earl Spence going over to England and beating the champion, Kell Brook. You got Crawford beating Julius Ndongo. Look at Julius Ndongo. He's done lost six straight from a knockout. Who is he? Then you got Lamont Peterson, two-weight division champion, Lamont Peterson, who is arguably a dog. You got Jeff Horn, who was gifted a robbery on the Manny Pacquiao fight. Then you got undefeated Ocampo, an undefeated rising prospect with over 20 wins and zero losses versus David Benavidez Jr., a man who had just got shot, one leg, walking around the ring, couldn't move laterally, but he gave you problems with the jab all night, Crawford. Roy, did you not see him keep Crawford at bay with the stick? It took Crawford to the 12th round to stop a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Now, how can you explain that about the levels? Then you got Mikey Garcia, the fourth division champion. Arguably top three pound for pound. And then you got Amir Khan, a punch-drunk, washed-out former shell of himself who sat there and got his face knocked out more times than a punching bag or a punching buddy. You hear me? You can't compare that. Then you got Showtime Sean Porter at his glory with a belt with six months of training camp versus Me Machine. Who? Me Machine. That's right, Me Machine. The man who arguably put Terrence Crawford on his ass in the fight. Have we seen Earl on his ass? Not even when Ugas got a free two-piece off of him did Earl touch the damn canvas. And then we got Danny Garcia, one arguably one of the most vicious counter punchers with the no-look pass that he gave Amir Khan, got washed by Earl Spence while he had a washed out version of Kale Brook, a man who fight career has been over. Then you got your Danis Uga, who was coming off a career-defining win over legendary 8th Division champion Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, who arguably beat Sean Porter in their title match versus Sean Porter from Bud Crawford. Now, you say you comparing who they fought. Man, if you look at Earl, it look like Rocky Road, and if you keep look at Crawford, it look like the Bunny Slope. So how are you going to sit there and compare the two it's like apples and oranges Roy you're looking like a liar Roy you're looking like a hater you got a few future Hall of Famers on Earl Spence list I only see that one in Porter on um, Crawford's list so where's the measuring stick uh, to break the fight down man um, to me Earl Spence is what you call a pressure cooker you know he's gonna come out there on medium and the fight going, it's going to turn up a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter. How does Terrence deal with that? Does Terrence go out and put water on that fire and calm it down? Does Terrence wait and rise his game with that uh, temperature rise? Or does Terrence go out and just kind of smother the whole fire? That's where the fight will come at. What style of fight does Terrence choose to use? Because he got three different ways he can deal with it, but we know Earl is. We know Earl coming. Earl is going to be Earl without a question. How do you You're right, Roy. Earl will be Earl, which has professional tactical aggression. You call him a pressure cooker. Yeah, he's a pressure cooker, all right? And when he turn up the pressure, that meat going to get tender. That Crawford will get tender. And if Crawford try to turn up the heat, then the heat inside the pot will boil that much longer, that much quicker, that much hotter. You keep saying that he has different ways to put it out. Okay, if you try to smother a grease fire, you're gonna burn yourself. And if you throw water on it, you make the blaze even bigger, Roy. Listen to what you're saying. You keep saying that he has all these different styles. What is your Spence, chopped liver? You forget Spence was an Olympian, a civil medalist who sparred against Floyd Mayweather in the doghouse. Gave him a black eye and Floyd Mayweather arguably is the best defensive fighter of all time. All time. So yes, he is more defensively sound than Crawford. Plus, I'm going to tell you like this. Spence is that damn dude, dog. And I don't know why you hate him because you see his greatness and you think it's going to diminish your legacy. 
And what you should do is embrace the fact that you're able to see a young king sit here and box himself out instead of hating like the people on the outside. We already got all them against us, Roy. Not you too. E2 Brute. Ain't that what Caesar said, Roy? That's still a different animal, isn't it? It is a different animal, but like Tony just said, when you got a skill to do it all, mm -hmm. and you can do whatever necessary to kind of diffuse that fire, that's why we all lean toward Crawford in the beginning. Because we know that he can do, we've seen him do several different things in the ring. He has different faucets of his game that we've already seen on display. You know, Earl has one real faucet. It's good, mm -hmm. but it's just that one. To make him go back like Ooz did earlier, it could be problematic for him. If you can make him shift sometime before he punches, it could be problematic for him. So like I said, I don't know if your eyesight is fading in your old age, Roy, but everybody keeps saying who guys hurt Spence. He didn't even hurt Spence when he got the two free hits. And you keep saying Spence does one thing good. No, he does that thing great. But that's not the only thing that he does. See, y'all keep thinking he's just some come forward pressure fighter. Okay. He can box off the back foot. One, he can jab. You know what? Jab. The key to the game is a jab. The same way Kell Brooks jabbed Terrence Crawford in two rounds and had his eye swollen. And you think Earl Spence jab is not gonna swell that eye? No, it might break that damn eye. And you talking about one thing that he can do, back him up in pressure. Your back spins up, he can fight off the back foot. He is not just a single category type of person. He can do it all well, but he hasn't had the person to make him do it well. And I say like this, like I said in the other part, if I'm running the ball down the damn field and I'm getting 10 yards of carry, we're going to keep feeding the beast. You know why? Because why do other things? If it ain't broke, then don't fix it. You know, if you can't stop it, why should I stop it? And Earl is going to surprise a lot more people and he's going to shut you haters up thinking that he only got one style. Okay, you can say Terrence Crawford got many styles and all the tools in the book. So we go to a demolition site. So Terrence Crawford done brought his whole tool bag. He's ready to tat a wall down with all these different sledgehammers and tools. But my boy Earl Spence pulled up in a goddamn backhoe. You say what? He put up in a damn backhoe and he just knocked the building down with one thrust. Yes, he drove over it with a backhoe. So all them damn tools in that bag didn't mean a damn thing. You keep your bag, you keep all your tools because this backhoe is gonna run right over you just like Spence is gonna run right over Crawford. And all your skills, take it and leave it. Uh, there's more there's more uh, wrinkles to the game of, of Terrence Crawford. But I, I do think that uh, Spence being the natural wealth away combined with being excellent in what he does, uh, which is which one of the things he does very well, it's not just the pressure, but he's, it's an insane body attack. It's an insane body attack, which if executed correctly in any fight, takes away your best attributes because the body attack debilitates you. And then no matter what you do well, which is fighting backwards or forwards, fighting lefty or righty, all those things you do so well, when you've been attacked to the body so well, it will break you. And I just can't get out of my mind that Crawford, no matter how much success he's had, is still a natural life. Thank you, Paulie. Spence will break you. Did you hear what he said? Spence will break him because that body attack is too crucial. This is coming from another boxer, Paulie, who sees it. He sees Spence on occasion. He's watched Spence break people. What you don't realize is if you tenderize meat long enough, you can take a piece of rump roast and make it softer than filet mignon, people. This is what I'm saying. All the pounding. This is blunt force trauma. A human body isn't made to take this type of punishment, this type of damage. And Earl comes with a relentless assault. It will snatch your soul. It will snatch your breath. And it will snatch your will to fight. Just like Ugas came in there, hyped and ready to take on the world as a champion, ready to do it for his people of Cuba. This man done faced death numerous occasions coming back to this country. And that couldn't stop him. But the power and the speed and skills and the tenacity of Earl, the true Spence, broke that man. And they knew 
They waiting for me to knock that man out and take that wheel. They knew they had to break his body. His mind was intact, but his body was broken. Ribs broken. Face broken. Eye sock broken. Kell Brook broken. Lamont Peterson broken. Come on, people. Garcia's career broken. Ocampo, where is Ocampo? When you fight Earl Spence, you lose boxing life. Earl, you can't fight another fight right behind him because he does internal damage. He comes out there and he embraces the art. It's gladiators like the Roman Colosseum. They fight to the death. It's just that the fighters nowadays isn't willing to die for what they believe in. But Earl told you it's kill or be killed. Boxing is not a sport. It's a fight to the death. It's a fight for your life. It's a fight of nutrition. It's one person wheel against the next and see who trained the best and who's going to come out on top. Who is number one? Who is the alpha male? It's the one sport that you can't play. You just got to fight with it. And Spence, he's going to put it all on the line. He's done face death. Crawford as well. But Spence is willing to face it before you beat him. And if Crawford ain't willing to go all out, then his body's going to go out before then. Yeah. Roy, you one of the greatest pure athletes to ever lace them up. But that's all you was, was a pure athlete. You wasn't technically sound. You relied on athleticism. So instead of technical skill, so Father Time is undefeated. He got a silver in 1988 when he was robbed. You should have some compassion for Spence because he also was robbed in the Olympics. And in 2003, you was the only, fight, the only fighter to go from junior middleweight all the way up to heavyweight champion and win the fight. After that fight, your athleticism started to fade. You snuck by and won a fight against Antonio Tarver, but then was knocked out in the rematch May 15, 2004. Then you fought Glenn Johnson September 25th of 04 and was knocked out. Then your third fight with Tarver was October 1st, 2005. You lost an unanimous decision. As your athleticism waved, you tried to get an edge. You tried to enhance. You popped dirty, Roy. You pop dirty for taking steroids. So you lost your skills, your physical attribute, and then you start popping enhancements. But talking about Spence, right? Is that why you mad? Because you a dirty PED user and he talks about how he's a clean boxer. Is that the reason, Roy? Like I said, you was one of the greatest athletes to ever lay some up. You the only person that played a full professional basketball game and come back and win a fight the same night. You had a God-gifted talent, but you just didn't have the skills to pay the bills. But Earl the True Spence does have them, Roy. But see, he's gonna go a long way, whether you hate or not. But you should look inside yourself and see that this man is a brilliant fighter. And you know you're being biased because if you look at it, Crawford ain't fought nothing, no, nothing to the extent of Spence. But hey, Roy, you know what it is? Y'all must have forgot!